happening? Hello, live in the booth. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm living the dream. I'm not too bad, thank you. Nice. Um, where are you based right now? So I'm in um, I'm in sunny Kent. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not like the Caribbean islands or you know the beautiful mesmerizing beaches of Brazil, but it is it is sunny and we are in Kent. So yeah, I'm I'm in Kent for a minute. Yeah. So. I made this mistake. I okay. So <laughs> some context. I met yeah. Charlie in Mexico, and I've always thought that you were Essex. <laughs> and the accent, you know, it, it's just yeah. It's like a. I think Essex and Kent accents, depending on who you speak to, they they can sound quite similar. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I get uh, yeah. It. So basically, I was just saying, I'm really obsessed with your content. I've been watching it for a while. Like I'm not even in sales, <laughs> and I take like the advice from it. Um, for everyone else, Charlie is, how would you describe your role? Like I think of it as remote sales, but what, how would you describe it? Yeah, that's a really solid question. I would say, yeah, so global takeover is like, you know, we can throw that one in there, but no, I'm officially, I'm a remote high ticket closer. So mm -hmm. essentially like, like the way I always describe it is when you've got like freelance plumbers or you've got freelance carpenters, self-employed builders, whatever. It's the same thing, except rather than doing building and construction, I, I do sales online. Nice. And when you say high ticket, uh, like high, how high does that go? Yeah, it's, it's, do you know what, it's funny because like people always go, well, what, how do you define a high ticket? I would say anything over like maybe a couple of grand is, is high ticket. Mm -hmm. um, anything below like two grand, you could probably just say a ticket. But mm -hmm. also it's just, if there's a product to sell and you do it online, um, then you could call yourself a closer. If you want to use that word, go for it. Ah, okay. So, so how did you get into sales then? Did you always oh, kind of... <laughs> oh, wow. What a question. The funny thing is, and you've probably heard this a million times, like most people who are in sales, they don't like wake up and go, oh, I want to be in sales, right? It's always something that you naturally will just fall into. Usually it's by accident as well. Um, but the way I actually fell into it was like you were saying, we met in Mexico, right? Two years ago. And we met, I think, toward the end of like when I was there. Um, the reason I fell into it though is because I moved to Mexico with a girl I literally met in Ibiza. It was a crazy one during COVID, like there was no one else there. Me and her, we sort of ended up like dating actually. <laughs> like we had a long relationship for like a year. And then one day we were like, let's get out of the UK. Where can we go? Oh, Mexico's in the green zone, right? It's the only place we can go to. So I moved there with all the intentions of being there six months with her, blah, blah, blah. We broke up really quickly, like literally three weeks. I was like, oh man. What do I do now? I don't want to go back to the UK. Mm. So I've got to find money, I've got to find friends, and I've got to find, um, and I have to speak the language. So I sort of got the Spanish covered, um, had the friends, and then I had no money. Like I was broke, mm -hmm. but I was having so much fun, so I didn't really care. Mm. And then one day, someone said to me, go to this bar, there's loads of English people there. So I went, everyone was drunk, watching the boxing, you know how English people are. And then someone said to me, well, what are you doing for work? I had no work. And he was like, well, how are you making money? I'm not making any money. He's like, wow, so you need a job? I was like, yes, really, genuinely, like, I need some money right now. <laughs> and then he said to me, well, have you ever done sales? And bang, like penny drop moment. Absolutely, I've been doing sales forever, more or less, you know, but nothing like this. He said, come to my office. We uh, sell fitness plans to fitness coaches on social media. And I had no idea what that meant. Just didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Cut a long story short, I went to the office, shadowed a few calls, closed my first couple of deals, and then I was like, ah, so this is like remote sales, right? It's, it's mental. So that's how I got into it. And you found it like quite easy to begin with as well? Just like natural? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was only phone sales back then. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't any Zoom calls. There wasn't like you're kind of missing a bit of human interaction there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I found it relatively easy because I didn't understand. I think when you first start something, and you don't know so much, you do quite well. Mm. Because you're not like trying to be clever, you're not trying to use word tracks, you're not trying to be over the top, you're just like person to person, hanging out, having a conversation, mm. having a bit of fun with it, and just being like, look, let's just, is this what you want? Do you want, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, relatively easy. Yeah, that's it. so it's like really surprising to me that, it, that, that you didn't think of that before, because when I met you, I can just tell like instantly <laughs> you are like you have a like, you have like a lot of charisma. Um, oh, I love it. Thank like, you. You just seem, it just seems like natural. Like when you when I when I saw that you were in sales, I was like, oh yeah, of course. Like yeah, of course. So the fact that it came a bit later to you. Um, no, I appreciate like, <laughs> that. I appreciate that. It's it's crazy though because back then, like, I didn't really understand what I was doing. Mm. You know, I didn't do any training. I didn't understand like why am I saying this? What what 
what am, what is this person going to feel when I say this? Is the kind of question I'm asking going to get the kind of answer I need? Use that like you know, I didn't know anything. Yeah. Literally, I was just young. I didn't care about much as long as I had money to drink pina coladas on the beach <laughs> and money to take girls out to drink pina coladas on the beach. I was great. Like that was yeah. it for me. You know, twenty. Well, I think I was twenty one, twenty two. No. Mm -hmm. Sorry, like maybe like 24, but yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I cared about. Um, mm -hmm. So the money wasn't that good then because I was literally getting like 5% per deal. And mm -hmm. sometimes those deals were literally 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. So on the bottom end, I was getting like 20 quid a call. And it's crazy, like looking back on it, that that's what I was living off. It's yeah. mad. Yeah, no, but I think that's like the same as like, I look back at like where I first started living. Yeah. And like, you think like the amount that you like were living on to begin with and thinking like, and you were like really grateful as well. You're like, oh yeah. my God, I get to do this. And it's like, great. And I, you kind of make it work. And then like looking back, like nearly, you know, five years later, you're like, I know I'm kind of like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> wow, I, had, I was so naive. <laughs> mm. It's funny though, isn't it? It's always like, you, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. And if you haven't got anything to compare anything to, then the only thing you know is gonna be great because yeah. there's just nothing else to look at and say, oh, could it be better, could it be worse? Mm -hmm. My only thing I had to compare it to was being a lift engineer. Like I was a lift okay. engineer in London. Yeah, my dad's got a lift firm. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of where I was going. But being a lift engineer, like fixing lifts in literally like sewer, like sometimes like <laughs> toilet water and all that horrible yeah. stuff. Like that was the other alternative. So I was like, do you know what? This is great. <laughs> you know, it's fine. I love it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to closing, so I give you a little story. I actually did a bit of cold cool sales. Um, okay. How did that go? And oh, I was terrible. They ended up selling to me. <laughs> <laughs> the closer became the close. Yeah, okay. no, no. I'd be on a call. There was like I remember one call that I did, and because I was, I'm like very good at like making, you know, making a connection with people, but I'm not very good yeah. at selling. So like when I was on the call, we had this 30 minute conversation about um, basically I was selling like horse riding related stuff, but um, we were having this like a conversation about horse riding and how like I want to maybe like get back into it and blah blah blah. And in the end, she was like, well, I'm not really interested in your service, but do you want to come and do a writing lesson? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. <laughs> you know what, like, it, although that is crazy, I've seen that so many times. Because, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like, without any formal training, you're a nice person talking to another nice person. Yeah. So it's just like, you, you're both sort of on the same leg in uh, pegging field, right? Yeah. There's no like, oh, this person is the, the, the leader in the call, that person's lead. It's two people hanging out. And yeah. like you would talk to any person on the street, or like, you know, you get served the coffee, for example, and someone's like, oh, where are you from? You're like, oh, I'm from here. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. It's just, it's just having an equal <laughs> conversation. So yeah, I get it's like interaction. Yeah, um, but then with, with on that then, so what's your like three top tips for succeeding in a virtual pitch, whether that's like Ooh. online or in a call? That is a solid question. Mm -hmm. uh, succeeding in a virtual pitch. Um, I think first of all, right, kind of a bit of a weird response, but I would say to, to succeed in pitching somebody, it's not about the pitch at all. Like mm -hmm. the pitch is so secondary. I think the main thing is you've got to understand who that person is, what do they need, meet them where they're at, and really identify what kind of problems, issues that they might have. And then by the time you have a pitch, you understand what they need help with and you can really just like tailor it to that person, mm -hmm. right? So I'd say understand, meet people where they're at. And some people don't really believe in this, but I'm a firm believer in it, energy. Mm. It's sales, if you really fundamentally strip it down to nothing else but its core ingredients, mm -hmm. sales is a transfer of energy. So if you're on low energy and you're on a call with someone else with low energy, the likelihood is that conversation is going to be a low energy conversation. Mm -hmm. And if you're asking someone to do something that they probably wouldn't have done, it's difficult if their energy is quite low because they've got to become someone else to invest into something that will allow them to have something they've mm -hmm. never had. So you've got to bring energy, you've got to match theirs, but subtly bring them up and up and up so that when yeah. you pitch them, they're so bought in. So mm -hmm. to an extent, like it doesn't really matter what you say at this point because they're already bought into something mm -hmm. and they at, like see you as the, the solution so much that whatever you say, as long as you tailor it correctly, it's probably going to help them. So that, I don't know if that specifically answered the question, but no, that's, yeah. I, I, that's really that. good. I think that's really good. And I kind of see it like, sometimes I kind of see sales like dating almost. Like, oh, yeah. like a good date. Like <laughs> you've got to bring the energy. Like you've got to bring oh, the energy otherwise. Yes, it is. <laughs> Honestly, like the older I get, the more I realize this as well. Sales 
is dating. Mm-hmm. Like business is literally just business, right? Mm-hmm. Charisma, you could professional charisma, social charisma, charisma is still charisma, but the way you say things is like, it's so true and you need to build things up. If you're on a date with someone or you see a pretty girl at the bar, if you go up to them like instantly and be like, oh, do you want to come back to mine then? What the hell? You haven't <laughs> earned that. You know, you can't, that's you, not same real. way. <laughs> exactly, same way as you get onto a sales call with someone and the first thing you say is, yeah, it's 10K. Mm. Like, what? What do you mean? Oh yeah, do you want to do it or not? Do what? Like it's, you need to earn that. And it's like you say, dating and sales are the same thing to an extent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like, you know, like all the films with sales, like Wolf of Wall Street. And there's yeah, also yeah. like, um, there's like a really famous one, uh, which, which has like the quote, like the ABCs of sales, which is like, oh. always be closing. Um, so like there's this, yeah, yeah, boring, yeah, that's it, yeah. So yeah, there's yeah, like, sure. there's like this stereotype of um, kind of what we see as like a salesperson, right? It's like aggressive, assertive, like, how do you find those really hard tactics Ooh. like work now? Do you have to be more subtle about it? Yeah, uh, again, that's another really good question. And it's almost like a double edged sword because I think a- aggression is something that some people do, but I don't really believe in it. I think being stoic, mm-hmm. being direct, and- and, and saying what people need to hear is really, really valuable. And I think you should always do it. The other thing is as well, like, just like you, before I actually got into sales, I will always thought and assume sales is like Wolf mm-hmm. Wall Street mentality, Jordan Belford, like, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I, I genuinely, well, I, I thought that. that was it. However, due to the fact that the economy is just different in terms of like what attracts people, we are now in an attention economy, meaning that people can re- Research sales techniques and then they can have a call with a salesperson they'd be like just heard this you know i really just heard this i know what he's doing to me so people can actually have an opportunity now to identify everything you might say to them before you say to it mm-hmm. so it's not really like being all aggressive and, and and if it isn't warranted but it's i think it's just taking more time to meet that person at where they're at and i think now sales is so casual mm-hmm. It's like, I'm in a black t-shirt in, in Kent, you're in Barcelona, like I was selling in Brazil and Argentina, you know, open neck shirt, beach right next to me. Mm-hmm. The barrier to entry is really, really low and it isn't all corporate, mm, you know, because yeah. you can get people living on beaches, making, selling 20, 30, 40K deals and they're just enjoying life. Mm-hmm. As long as your skill set is there, kind of, it's not the suit and tie mentality. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of, I feel like now, like people know what the corporate, um, like script is now for a lot of things so like being more natural is like way better 100 um, percent. yeah exactly so like when it comes to building confidence in sales okay are you born with riz oh. or do you create it <laughs> that that's the best question you got me so far are you born with riz um you, you're born with riz i think <laughs> <laughs> i'll take it i'll take it um are you born with riz um i think I think you can be born with naturally more confidence about yourself. However, mm-hmm. I do genuinely believe that confidence can be learned, right? Mm-hmm. Just like anything else. I think it's a skill set, but I think it, it isn't like you do one thing and then confidence get better. Like you can't practice being confident and then you get more confident because how do you practice being confident? Like how do we measure that? What's the metric? Yeah. I think confident really just stems from doing one thing over and over again to the point where you know you're very good at it and then that confidence comes and confidence as well is like knowing something or sort of risking something might not go very well but still being absolutely fine that's confidence um but yeah it's like riding a bike you know how do you become confident to ride the bike we just ride the bike loads and now you do it and you're like yeah i'm confident i could do it just practice 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 but yeah riz riz can be learned um and taught i think some people are born with it and that's great but you can still do it 100 mm-hmm. percent. yeah i think it's like about facing your fear a bit isn't it like if you're if you're not like a, a naturally social person yeah. then it's like i think it's good for you to be chucked into like a party where you don't know anyone and kind of keep doing that a few times definitely definitely mm-hmm. and it's like this right you, you travel right you're in barcelona we met in mexico you're quite mm-hmm. a confident individual as well the way that you're confident in sales is actually nothing to do with sales like forget mm-hmm. sales for a minute it's what are you doing outside of that sales call what are you doing outside of your meetings because the person you are outside is the same person you're going to be inside, except there's going to be more pressure. Mm -hmm. Meaning that sales sometimes is going to be a mirror. So whatever you're doing outside of these calls, that person's going to go onto a sales Mm -hmm. call. And if you're not ultra confident in yourself, that person is not going to buy from you because why are you going to buy from someone who's 
not confident, a bit weak, you know, less of a leader. Like they need to trust you. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And so like on that then, do you, when you're selling, um, when you're sort of, you know, closing these products or um, services, do you feel like you need to have like 100% product knowledge when you're doing that? Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's an argument or let's say a debate, actually, argument's a bit mm -hmm. strong. It's a debate I hear a lot. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm on this side that, that says, nah, you don't need loads of product knowledge. Because just like we said at the start, when you know loads, you try and flaunt. When yeah. you have an abundance of knowledge, you try and use different tricks, different tactics and different strategies. If you only know a little bit, you're only going to be talking about a little bit. So you can't really mess it up. Mm -hmm. And if you have too much product knowledge, sometimes you'll say things that are completely unnecessary. Like if we're on a sales call, for example, and you're trying to buy social media to, to promote yourself, and I start telling you about the call to action, the, the, the click per customer, um, the real views, the conversion percentages, that's just more information for you to disagree with me. Because mm -hmm. you might know more than that. And I'm like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have said that. She, she's an expert, you know? Whereas mm -hmm. if I just like talk about you, your emotions, what you're trying to do, your goal, we can control that. So yeah, less, less product knowledge is better in my opinion. Mm, interesting, okay, okay. Yeah. And so now I have a little quiz for you. Oh, <laughs> let's get it, let's get it. Have I'm you got my it. buzzer? I'm yeah. ready, I'm ready. What's the reward as well? If I get them all right, what's the reward? You get uh... a medal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, medal. You get a medal. Little, I'll take yeah, little medal. I'll take <laughs> Send yeah, it to you. Olymp we missed out on the Olympics, but I'll still, oh, I'll yeah, still come yeah. and take it. <laughs> uh, so, I'm calling it a little Riz quiz. So, the answers Ooh, are I love either it. Riz or no Riz situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, first one. So, I'm like reading it from my laptop and it's like very small. Okay, so Adam, the sales guy, mm -hmm. he's on a call with a cold prospect. Okay. Uh, so he knows a lot about the product. He's super knowledgeable, but he doesn't. He he's, doesn't really like cold calls because he feels like he's pestering the prospect sure. a little bit. So he's a bit shy when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So he gives like a short sales pitch, and mm. the person on the other end says, "You know, I'm interested, but not now. Maybe another day." And he says. Okay, cool. Um, here's my email address. So just feel free to call me whenever you want, and we'll do it another day. And then, and then they just end the phone call. Is that Riz or no Riz? That is that is double <laughs> negative Riz. That is zero Riz. Like literally minus ten out of ten. That is zero Riz. There's yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I would say no Riz. And um, what would you do? Like, what would what should he have done? They'd be like, yeah, look, sounds interesting. Um, just shoot me an email. I'm like, yeah, sure. Look, all diets start on a Monday, right? Because we always want to put off what we can do today, tomorrow. So why don't we just mm -hmm. do this? What's actually interesting about it, though? Because I said a load of shit. You could have said everything was awful, but you didn't. So what's interesting? And then you just get more engaged, more engaged with the conversation. And then, bang, that opens a door for us to go forward with that. We are pushing the needle forward. Mm -hmm. OK. And so the next one, a little bit controversial. Bring it on the shirt. Go with it. So you were at a party. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so a guy is at a party. <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> Not <I'm> you. <laughs> but hitting on a girl at a party, opening with a neg line. Is that Riz or no Riz? Wait, say it again. So what you, line? You know, like neg, like negging. No, hit oh. me up. Get, oh my god, you don't know neg No, no, no. no. <laughs> In, I might know it, but maybe I just don't know it's negative. It's Give like, me a, like a um, so there's like a lot of dating coaches like this. As, like, so basically you open with um, kind of like a, it's like a jokey kind of like negative Ooh. thing. Like, um, like, oh, I love your earrings. Oh, okay. I bought, I bought the same for my mum sort of thing. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a compliment, yeah, if, but then. Oh, so, so, it's a bit it's, so I, I would say then based on that definition, it's, it's Riz. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I would, okay. I, would, I, would use, I would use the same, I mean, maybe not the earring thing, mm -hmm. but like a variation of that. Definitely. Because I think it allows you to compliment someone. So it makes them feel good without giving away the intention that you're trying to get anything back from it. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about it that way. Yeah. Cause it's like, like if you go up to a girl and she's in the coffee shop and you say, Oh, I like your posture. Mm -hmm. That's a genuine compliment and something, something that maybe she hasn't heard. It's also like a massive win for her. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh yeah, my posture is good. And then bang, you've, the doors are now done. Uh, sorry, the doors are down, there's no resistance. And now you can just have a normal conversation. You yeah, but, that, but that's like a positive oh. compliment. This is, this is like a negative compliment. Oh, okay. So like, 
So it'd be like, oh, right. so it'd be like for a girl, it would be like me saying to a, like, it'd be like a girl saying to a guy, oh, like, I love how slim you are. I love skinny guys. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay, so no, it isn't real, but I think if you, if you delivered it, yeah, because execution's big. Yeah. If you delivered it in the right way, maybe it would be Riz. You know, maybe mm. if you said it in a jokey way, potentially, but no, blanket statement, neg, yeah. no Riz. Also, <laughs> is it yeah, some people say yes, some people say no. What do you um, think? So, me, you know, I think with some people it works and then others it doesn't. For me, yeah. <laughs> so I accidentally was, I got, I, was hit on with like a neg line once but i genuinely didn't realize it was negative and i took it as a compliment so, <laughs> yeah, nice, <laughs> so like this nice. in playa del carmen and this guy like came up to me and he was like oh i love your earrings like i bought my mum the same pair and i took it it's like oh that's so sweet yeah i mean <laughs> if a girl came up to me and was like oh i really like your hoop earrings i've got the same pair for my dad i'd be like oh so you, my my immediate thought would be like, oh, your dad wears earrings. <laughs> like, it wouldn't even be about me, you know. Um, that's uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So next one. Um, during okay, got, okay. I think this is a common one. During a product demo. Okay. We're back with Adam. We've got Adam, the sales guy again, Ad and he's doing Adam. Adam's back, and got he's it. doing a product demo, okay. and basically the software has glitched on this live demo oh. with the client. Uh, with a prospective client and he makes like you know he kind of plays it off he makes like a little joke um to kind of like get out of it um but you know the screen's just frozen nothing's happening so this isn't a riz or no riz question this is a what is the riz move here mm. so software crashes screen goes silent all right first of all you need to just attack it with some humor you need to soften the blow mm -hmm. and uh, just be like would you believe me if you are the uh, the very first person this has happened to? And then, huh, like, okay, cool. Well, you are. Anyway, whilst <laughs> I try and fix this, from what you've seen so far, can you see how this would be able to benefit X, Y, Z? Like, genuinely, from what you've seen, do you think it would be helpful? And then I think you buy yourself time to try and fix it. So just get them in, engage them. Okay, you do. Why do you? Oh, that's interesting. And what about that specifically do you think is going to be able to... Right, and how does this compare to what you've seen before? Remember you told me you looked at other things that, and all you're doing is re-engaging them, but you're buying yourself time. So if you need to reboot it, you got it, right? You've earned it. But at the same time, maybe you can just carry on asking those buyer questions and the, the from what they've seen was enough to, to get them to where they should be. Um, <laughs> the other thing is though, if they're not, if they are not willing to like play that game whatsoever, zoom out and say, Look, obviously the software's crashed. That's that's completely on me. It's not your fault, it's, but it's just how it is. What I do want to do though, because I would hate software to get in the way between you doing the thing you want to do. Why don't we just put this on pause? Give me 10 minutes. Let me reboot the system and um, hang on Zoom. I'll turn my camera off when I come back. Go make a coffee. I might run too. Don't put any milk in it. I'm on black coffee. Don't try and tempt me now. And, uh, you know, make a joke again and then come back. Mm, yeah. That's, that's good. I like the um, putting it on them as well, like a little bit. But like, I don't want I don't want to let software get in between what you want to do. I like that. Yes, exactly. Because mm -hmm. and then they feel like, oh, he's he's got my back again, right? Yeah. You're always those little like glimpses. You're always just feeding them into it. So it's mm -hmm. good. We, we actually have a question um, from the oh. comments. So, did you go through a period in your career where you weren't getting as many calls booked as promised? And if so, how did you change this? Boom. That's um. That's a very, 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 very good question. And yeah, absolutely. Um, I, up until like really recently, to be honest with you, but it happens mm -hmm. so, so much, which is why you need to understand how to network, how to find gigs, how to vet opportunities as well. And I do teach that in my course, but anyway, um, yeah, it happens. And unfortunately it's a part of the game, right? You never really know until you're actually there taking calls because at the end of the day, the person you're talking to, the business owner, who wants you to sell for them, they want to make money. Mm -hmm. So if they can tell you information that's really attractive, meaning you go in, they're going to do that. Even if they're the nicest person in the world, they have their, their, in, their business at interest sake. So yeah, the way you can get around it is vet and learn how to vet opportunities really well. The other way though is you just jump in, figure it out. Mm -hmm. It isn't what it is, address it. If you can't see a solution, find another gig. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Thanks for sending that in. 10 out of 10 questions. <laughs> And finally, well, not finally, actually, we have a few more, but um, I know that you've got your next stand now. Yeah. Uh, yes. And have you given it a test run? Or I what have, do you think of it? I have given it a test run. Um, yeah, brilliant. Very easy, very simple. Um, 
as well. Um, my laptop is actually downstairs, so I'm not looking at it at this moment in time. But yeah, very easy to use, very supportive. Um, my other one was very flimsy as well, and it didn't really stand up. And sometimes when you're on the Zoom calls and the laptop will drop off, it's it's a bit of an embarrassing moment. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So it just like the next stand for me is just help me be be. Well, I don't have to worry about it now, right? So it's never an issue. Yeah, and you can take like. Do you think you're gonna take it with you when you go traveling and stuff? Hundred percent. Even yeah. the way it came, even the way it was presented in the box, in that silk case it comes with, it looks really professional. Um, it's presented really well. But I'm a convenience mm -hmm. person. If something's inconvenient, like it doesn't matter how good it is, I'm not gonna use it. This was very convenient, and and again, I've I've actually got a trip coming up in like a couple of mm -hmm. weeks, and I've already tested it out to fit in my bag. Nice. And it's Where are you going? Slot. It slots in there <laughs> nicely. Um, I am off to Miami. Oh, nice. nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. are you partying there? Um, más o menos. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <Mas or menos. laughs> no, no. It's, it's 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 a combination combination of business and pleasure. But to be honest, like it's going to be a bit more. Not boring, but I won't be partying a lot. Like, let's say 80% business, 20% pleasure. Got it, got it. And um, so, like, what's next for Charlie? What are you doing next? What's your yeah. What's your next thing? It's an amazing question <laughs> again, Nicole. Um, I would say the next move for myself is, like, I'm always, always, always getting my fingers in many pies. Like, I'm always trying to collaborate with entrepreneurs, collaborate with business owners, start up the next project, chase, chase the next mission statement. Um, what I'm doing now though is just selling, selling, mm -hmm. selling, just literally practicing my craft, getting better, earning as much money as humanly possible mm -hmm. while still enjoying it, having fun, connecting, helping people. On the side though, there's another project I've got going on with a social media thing. Mm -hmm. um, I can't give too much away yet, but it will be very exciting. And the other thing oh. is um, I just dropped my school community called UK Closers. Um, okay. And that's li literally just teaching younger people how to get into sales if they don't want to be in a nine to five, they want more freedom. Um, I can teach you how to do it and it won't cost you an arm and a leg, which I know a lot of programs do. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put that link below after uh, this is posted, cause that's oh, really yeah. cool. I was, wondering uh, see, if you, I was wondering if you had a course or not, but that's cool. Yeah, and it, this is the thing, right? As soon as you say I've got a course, you're like one of those gurus, blah, 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 and I'm not. A, I don't think I've earned the right to be called a guru. It's bullshit. Um, the other thing is, um, I, I'm not, like, I'm just an entrepreneur who wants to do good things and I want to help other people. So I'm not a coach, I'm not a guru, I'm just someone that knows a bit and I want to help people do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like, I mean, I watch your video, any, any single time you post something, I'm, like, first watching it. <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> there's even, I, though, yeah? Honestly, there's even been, like, a day or two where, like, I don't, like, see anything from you and I'm, like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on. Charlie, yeah, what's... <laughs> yeah. You know what's, what's crazy, right? Like, since I've been going crazy with the content, it, it disrupts things because you you really 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 start seeing very easily who is here for it and who isn't here for it and i get a lot of not a lot but i get a fair amount of criticism for being so active on socials doing my thing um and yeah it's a bit of a tough one you, you've kind of take it on the chin but then the other side is you get all this audience you get people that follow you yeah. and because of my content like i've i've got myself in rooms with people i've never got into like exactly. i'm selling a real estate event like I want to say five weeks ago and that was purely because of content like exactly. content people will change your life personal branding is everything mm -hmm. no um, exactly and like any yeah and any of those people that have like negative comments like they don't realize that this you like to grow you need to be post you need to be visible you need to be like around all the time um yeah. so yeah that's but, yeah that's yeah it always annoys me when people kind of like neg on things like that that's a... i like the word neg as well i'm gonna start yeah, using no. it content. but it's, it's all right though because at the end of the day like the more the more attention i get the more eyeballs on yeah. me the more opportunities come my way and the, the, potentially the more money and impact you can have so it's like if you've got any negativity throw it my way send it you know it. i'll wrap it up yeah. to you. I'll eat, but, it yeah, up. <laughs> I'll eat it up you know uh, breakfast lunch dinner free courses salt <laughs> pepper seasoning bring it on we don't care mm -hmm. um there was another question as well yeah so, yeah i just saw that so I, and he's actually from your uk uh, as well. yes. that's incredible <laughs> love that love that yes i hope you're well um thank you for jumping in what are some common objections you get on calls how do you handle them that's a good question um i think everyone sort of hears the same objections it's like money um my partner isn't here right now i need to talk to them or timing i think mm -hmm. uh money is like unless they date i mean partner sometimes can be a smoke screen mm -hmm. you know or well, my partner's not here okay what do you think 
they would say if they were here? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, look, let's just say they, they are here right now. You know them more than me. What do you think they'd say? Oh, it's the money. So actually, it's nothing to do with the partners, the money. So we just talk about the money. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it always ties down to money. You just got to figure out what is bullshit, what's a smoke screen, what's yeah. a concern, what's an objection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our final little fun question, if you could sit down with, if you could have dinner with any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Wow, that is such a great question. Um, oh man, where do I? Okay, so actually, I've, there's so many that pop into my head, mm -hmm. but there's a guy called Matt Gray. Um, Matt Gray is, is a very modern entrepreneur. He essentially does like crazy numbers per month. Like honestly, I think 700K a month. Like he's absolutely shelling it. But the reason he does so well is because he has a business to optimize his lifestyle. So he's really big on founders being themselves, massive on personal branding. Mm -hmm. And because of his personal brand, he's like got a newsletter that feeds into this. And it all just stems from him, mm -hmm. just being himself, being completely authentic. And it allows him to work in different areas of the world, create communities and people love him. The reason I want to sit down with him is because he's killing, um, like enjoying life, but making money and helping people. Mm -hmm. Like his whole thing is he works four hours a day. Oh, that's so good. That's the dream. I, I know. <laughs> and he's in like Brazil, he's in Argentina, he's like in Thailand. He's, he, he's helping like communities. He's like got some online schools and mm -hmm. it's just like, wow, but that's, that's the levels you can be at. And anyone can do it, especially if you have amazing equipment to help you stem in the online space like Next Stand provides. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, you've got another uh, UK closer here too, Timothy. Hey, we on top, baby. <laughs> yes, Timothy, UK closers all day. That's it. UK closers <laughs> to the moon. That's my uh, that's a good friend of mine, Rory. Love you, brother. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we're really on top. We're, we're going to do good things. Nice. Well, I'm so excited for what's coming next. And I'm going to like check out that community as well and put the link 100%. below. Um, but thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for everyone who joined as well. And for all the questions. It's so fun. Yeah. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Hopefully in a different country. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> new country, new me. You know, 2025, we don't know where we're going to be. No. The only oh. thing we do know is we're going to be on top. That's it. Ah, oh, come yes. on. <laughs> <laughs> love we'll it, love it. it. <laughs> All right, love it. Well, Nicole, it's been a pleasure. Great to see you again. Hopefully, we won't leave it as long as two years before uh, before we um, meet up again. But yeah, crazy. That is actually crazy when you think about right. it. <laughs> no, it's actually mental. But yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Uh, lots of love. Thanks to Next Stand. Thanks, Nicole. And uh, yeah, just keep winning, people. The world is yours. Thank you. Bye. Peace. Bye, bye, guys.